So we need to install the following software binaries for today's session. Uh, and as I mentioned, they're available from edelivery.oracle.com and support.oracle.com. The later version being support.oracle.com, which is available as a patch. And it consists of three zip files, uh, roughly about 4 GB in size. And then, of course, the uh, Oracle Unbreakable Linux and the two components, which are Oracle VM Server and Oracle VM Manager that comprise the Oracle VM Suite. So the first step that I performed was install Oracle VM Server uh, 2.x on bare metal on the first physical machine, which is a which is the machine which is the first machine described here. It has a dual core processor, so it's it's not as beefy, but it's pretty decent. Now, when you install Oracle VM Server, it installs on bare metal hardware. It comes with a pared down version of Linux called JEOS, uh, pronounced Juice, uh, so you don't have to have an OS on it. It's the first thing that you basically install on the bare metal hardware. Now, as far as the Oracle VM Manager is concerned, the that component needs to go on an OS, and that's where you need to install and configure uh, just a bare bones version of OEL uh, 5.5. And after that's done, you can go ahead and install Oracle VM Manager on it. So as I mentioned, format the external USB hard drive with FAT32 so you won't have to perform additional steps uh, when you mount it and copy the stuff to your Oracle VM server. Now, all of that is, is assuming that your Oracle VM server does not have internet access. And even if it does, it does not have GUI browser access. Uh, you can go ahead and wget. Uh, on, at the command line directly if you want on the uh, VM server itself but then again you will have to go ahead and install additional components which I did not want to I do not want to mess with the uh, factory configuration that it comes with so Okay, so we just went through the process of creating the five shared virtual disks needed for automatic storage management. Now, there are two methods of creating your n number of nodes, uh, Oracle VRAC cluster on Oracle VM. One is based on shared virtual disks that are physical block devices. Uh, and the other one is file-based shared virtual disks that you can go ahead and create just like we did today. The, the file-based shared virtual disk creation process is not officially supported by Oracle, although they, uh, they do provide a mechanism of performing and testing your rack cluster for functionality-based purposes, uh, for testing its functionality, uh, but it's not officially uh, supported. In the production world, you typically have your SAN base or your, your NFS uh, devices that you can actually go ahead and provision to your physical OVS machines or your Oracle VM server machines. And that configuration is 100% supported by Oracle. Now, the reason we didn't do that today is because I do not have a SAN uh, at, my, at my house. So, in which I would imagine that most in the community, if you're just doing it for practice and learning purposes, uh, and you can just go ahead and use your SATA drive uh, and put shared virtual file-based shared uh, file-based shared virtual disks on it for ASM. So, now that's what we, this step we perform. We I've, uh, I've, I already performed it before the session began uh, because of time constraints that I imported the Oracle Rack VM templates after I copied, uh, inflated, and con concatenated the TGZ, TGZ files. Again, all of this is described in quite a bit of detail in a comprehensive guide that's available at brainsurface.com. 
And once you import the templates, you have to go ahead and approve them. That's just a simple point and click process. So right now we're in the process of creating our first node of the VRAC cluster, our first guest VM or DOM, DOM U uh, as it's interchangeably called. Uh, the guest VMs are called DOM1, DOM2 and so on as DOM U, uh, whereas the actual hypervisor itself sits on what's known as DOM0. While the build cluster is running, we will be giving you an overview of what Oracle VM is, the different components it comprises, and it's a little bit about its history and genesis and its current standing in the industry. So that's what we're going to do after we set up the second guest VM. The first VM is still, okay, it just came back up, so I'll switch the screen. Okay, so as you can see, the first node of our VRAC cluster, or virtualized cluster based on Oracle VM templates, is powered off now. It's fully created. I will go ahead and do create the second one. I'm choosing the first option, which is based on the VM templates. Selecting my server pool here. Selecting my template. Giving it a giving the guest VM a name and confirming the password for the console. This is the VNC console password. And again, attaching the virtualized network interfaces to two distinct Zen bridges and confirm. So as you can see, very simple, very easy. Uh, point and click and you're done. So this should take about seven to ten minutes to complete. Alright, so while this is happening, because I only have 4 GB of physical RAM, I have to change the recommended size, reduce it a little bit. So I'll go ahead and configure my first node, my first guest VM. and change the virtual RAM size to 1.5 gig. And also attach the shared ESM virtual disks. Now it's important to add these disks in the same order. Um, this is not a, this is not strictly a requirement, but it's easier if you are, um, it's easier and it conforms with the, uh, parameter file for these templates that is factory package from Oracle. So as you can see, this is taking a little bit longer now because there is another creation, another guest VM creation process going on in the background. And so the two processes are running concurrently and they're sort of like competing for resources, although not in the strictest sense, uh, but it's taking a little long. Typically it should just fly uh, if it was just the only thing that was going on. probably fighting over your one terabyte hard drive right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, and interestingly it still says shows as 
2 gigabytes. I have to change that. It's probably because I did not hit the save button. <laughs> And that should save my configuration. While this is happening, another uh, thing. All of my hardware that I buy is mostly unbranded. And because I like to assemble my own machines, uh, I, everything that I buy is from pricewatch.com. So if you guys are not familiar, uh, it's a great little comparative uh, shopping site. Uh, they don't sell anything themselves, but they have comparative um, shopping lists from all the major hardware vendors. So if you want to buy anything like a hard drive or network interface cards or Firewire or SCSI disks, that's the place to go, pricewash.com. It's been around for about 12 years or so uh, that I know, and I've been using them forever. Save me quite a bit you know of money. How they are for international orders, Tariq? Uh, a friend of mine got something from Dubai, shipped to Dubai, and that was pretty good. But they are not a vendor themselves. They are... Okay. Interestingly, the memory size is still more. Yeah, but to answer your question, Jeremy, they friend of mine, they are not a vendor themselves. They have lists of thousands of vendors, including Best Buy, including CompUSA. So if CompUSA is cheaper, so what they do is they compare prices on the internet. And it's a comparative shopping list, basically. Uh, comparative uh, shopping site for vendors. So. I've used them a few times, too. That's, that's oh, you have? Awesome. Okay. All right. Let's. GUI is kind of playing games with me sometimes. It does that. Maybe you need to refresh this page in order to see the changes. Okay. So this is the running pool subdirectory under the OVS, which is the Oracle VM server shared repository. And under that is a directory called the running pool, which houses all your guest VMs or your DOM use. And I am changing directories and moving into the directory for the first guest VM. And in there, there is a file called vm.config or vm.cfg, which has all your configuration details about your guest VMs. And I'm going to verify two things. One, my, all my attached shared virtual disks have been attached. Uh, virtually to this guest VM. As you can see, it's uh, pretty slow right now. Now the the creation of the shared file-based ASM disks, that method allows you to create a n number of node cluster, n number of node virtual cluster within the same physical machine. So that's another advantage that you have. Now the delay that you see is not because of GoToWebinar. It's actually physically on my machine. That's how, how long it took. Because the other, the other, as Jeremy mentioned, the other machine is being created and is hogging on the resources. So, okay, 